Hello everyone, it's Joe here from OmniPoke, the channel that brings you guys everything Pokemon and today it's my round one of the Poker Beach April tournament and I'm going to be playing the deck that I profiled yesterday uh, just straight Seismitoad, I think it can deal with pretty much everything uh, the hardest matchup is probably going to be Greninja, I think I've really struggled against Greninja decks in the past but other than these things I'm pretty safe around everything my round one opponent is Wasted Sky Pirate so we will uh, offer him a challenge now. Let me just find my deck. Um, there it is, straight toad. And yeah, he's actually someone who I've met in person. He's um, a UK player. We met in London, I believe, City Championships, and I remember he just bubbled cut, so he's actually a fairly good player for sure. And uh, he's also a viewer as well, so hello to you if you're watching. Uh, Harry, I believe your name is. So. Um, We'll uh, get into it now, hopefully. And there should be some good games. I think Toad is probably the safest thing to be playing right now if a lot of people are hyping Night March. So I thought I'd just take this. And our opponent is playing Fighting Fire Colorless. Interesting for sure. And we start Toad with DCE, so we're already quite happy. A lot of disruption in the hand and Misty as well, so... Okay, so it looks like we're up against some sort of fire deck that plays a maxi engine. Uh, very interesting for sure. We don't mind fire decks at all. We are Seismitoad, of course. Um, last time I saw him, he was playing Pyro though, so Pyro could be an issue. Um, we'll, we're going to have to wait and see, really. wonder what the maxi target is. It could be something like Gallade just to help him draw more cards and get around Mega Manetric because Mega Manetric can eat through Pyro quite easily. So that would make a lot of sense. If this is indeed Pyro, his sleeves are trying to, well, might be giving it away a little bit. Um, so this could be awkward for us, for sure. Uh, we'll draw for that mulligan. And we see an Entei to start us off. Definitely going to be interesting this game. We do have a Zerosic if he wants to start putting Assault Vests on, so that's a really good start for us, I say. Um, depending on what he tries to do this turn. <laughs> He's not too happy to see Seismitoad straight away. We see a Battle Compressor from him turn 1. This could indicate a few things. If he wants to throw away Blacksmith or maybe something like Sycamore. Um, as well as some fire energy most likely although against Toad you really want to throw away supporters only if he has VS Seeker in hand I guess so at the moment we're looking quite happy but as soon as we start seeing Litlios it's kind of awkward for us because we don't play Hex <laughs> uh, okay so there's Gallade and a Maxi let's see if he can get it turn 1 I've seen Ultra Ball lowering his hand to three cards. There's a Shaman, so he might be going up in order to go down again. Or he's just trying to ignore the Gallade this matchup. We do see a Shaman for three more cards. Second Entei comes down, so we're seeing a lot of prizes be put down on the board for us early, so it might not be Pyro at all. Um, I'm just sort of thinking it's Pyro because the last time I saw him that's what he was playing so probably just Entezard with the 1-1 one, one Gallade see Muscle Band onto the benched Entei, another Entei gets benched still yet to see a supporter, there's a Giovanni Scheme drawing him up to uh, 5 no attachments this turn, but against Toad, it can be awkward. We see another Battle Compressor. Probably going to throw away. He's already got two Fire gone. Might be a Blacksmith that he goes for this turn. To put in the discard, even just a VS Secret back immediately. Because uh, he has to assume he's getting punched next turn, of course. Wow, he puts more Fire Energy in there. Interesting. We see an Acrobike. Getting rid of a fifth fire energy. Wow, that's a lot in there straight away. Trainer's mail as well. 
for another acro bike. Here is the acro. Looks like it's a slightly harder decision this time. <laughs> My opponent's gone through a lot of their deck early. Seismitoad can often get wins just by milling. Um, but with the weakness on Entei, we should be able to take the prizes in this matchup. But our opponent's gone through a lot of cards already. They decided to get rid of a Scorched Earth. Scorched Earth is one of the only means that they can draw once they get hit with Quaking Punch. But with so many fire already in the discard, I think that's a wise choice. Um, it is one less stadium that he can use to counter our Rough Seas, though, so that could be handy. Because oftentimes they like to spam Flame Screen. Um, to lower our output. We do see a VS Eka early, obviously anticipating Seismitoad. Just for the Giovanni it looks like. We see the attachment of double colourless, which we love to see, and a pass. So we can bench another Toad here quite comfortably. We can play double colourless down. Uh, just gonna E-hammer. And I think I'm happy to hold the rest right now. I'm not really too bothered about this uh, muscle band. I'd rather save Zerosic for uh, more energy, stuff like that. So we can just punch now. Really uh, stress-free start from us. Already see one Lysander in the discard. Entezard normally plays only one Lysander. Um, but we've already seen a couple of extra supporters like the Maxi and the Giovanni, which aren't always played. So he might be playing double Lysander. Um, but we just see Giovanni for two cards and a pass. Now that, hit, now that we hit VS Seeker, I might be happy to just Misty here. And get rid of the Judge. I'm quite happy with that. We do hit Sycamore, and I think it's just safe to take Sycamore here. In case we are going to be like stalled or our energy gets taken off, anything like that, I want to have Sycamore just in in the back, just in case. We still have VS Seeker 4, Judge or Misty as well, so we're happy to punch for now. And what can the opponent really do? We do see a blacksmith at last. Where's it, where's it going? Is it going to be the active? No, it's going to be to this bench, Dente. And again, just a pass there. So we can start trying to crushing hammer these away. So he's not just a DC from using his second attack on us. So we're going to force him to have more energy basically here. Again, I think Zerosic might be better served dealing with a DC. So it's probably just going to be a punch for our first couple of prizes here. Um, don't think I really need to do anything else, so we're happy. Taking the first prize, we get Super Scoop Up, which is actually a really nice card here. I'm assuming we're getting hit with Flame Screen next turn. The Flame Screen resists after Weakness and Resistance, so we still do some damage to the Entei, as of right now at least. If he does use Flame Screen. There's an energy attachment for the turn and the flame screen for 50. We hit another Seismitoad, so it might be the IVS Seeker for Misty getting rid of this Toad. Um, what else could I get off of the Misty? So I'm looking for either Rough Seas, Fury Belt, or an Energy Denial card. We have lots of those in the deck, <laughs> so let's go for Misty again here. I really do like Misty in this deck. Um, we don't hit any of those things. Could go for Ultra Ball for Shaman for some cards. Getting rid of like Cassius and Lysander. That's not bad. We do have the Shaman here, um, but if we take the Ultra Ball, we get more cards from the Shaman. So let's go for that line. Cassius can go, Lysander can go. We'll take Shaman. And we'll see what we can get off of three cards here. 
we're not in dire need to get any of these things but it's just so much better if we do have these things so we do miss a lot of these um, I'm happy to hold everything here and just go for punch next turn he does have the option to use heat tackle for a knockout but I'm not too threatened by that I don't think there is the double colorless energy And a blacksmith as well. Wow. Is he going to stack it all on here? No, he's going to spread the board around. Interesting. There's the heat tackle. So he takes his first two prizes. Gets a tails, which is actually really bad for him. So now if we are able to find Fury Belt, we can knock out this Entei. I believe. Yeah. Hmm. This always happens. I think I'm going to start going for super scoop ups on Shaman. The first one comes off. Now I'm going to get rid of these two supporters. So we're definitely digging for Fury Belt here for sure. There is Fury Belt. We're very happy with this. Um, again, this is going to start threatening us next turn, but I think we can deal with that issue next turn. So we get over the second Dente, which is good. Our opponent has used two blacksmiths so far. We get a fairly irrelevant headringer, unless he starts finding um, Charizard. There is a Scorched Earth. We see, so how many energy is he playing? Five six seven probably seven total in my opinion um, seven is fairly high we see another blacksmith that's really awkward compared to double colorless energy so it looks like another heat tackle is going to be coming in here for 130 damage does get heads as well so he doesn't damage himself I'm sure he'll be happy with that so we're going to try and use super scoop up here we do get another heads feels bad man we'll take up toad Bench Toad. We have so many DC in hand, it's painful. Can't use a Sycamore. Can't get around this at all, um, which is really bad. Um, I think we have to let him do it next turn so that we can attach one and then Sycamore. Way safer that way. And also we could draw into something like VS Seeker for Cassius or something like that. So We'll do the punch for 80. This is like his last stand really with Entei. So we'll see what he can really do. We see another Scorched Earth, so that's his 8th energy. 8th fire. Quite a high count for the Entezard deck. I remember my list actually played 6 fire. So there's a Charizard. Uh, still only... Oh, 3 Blacksmiths used. So um, I think we're fairly comfortable here. We see a Tails on the Entei. Fairly irrelevant at this point. Uh, we see another Fury Belt, which is nice, I guess. Um, we're going to attach the Toad here. And we're going to use Sycamore. We hit Rough Seas, Crushing Hammer. Super Scoop Up is something I go for now for sure. Do you get a Tails? Rough Seas is fairly irrelevant um, 60 next turn we have 90 I guess we put it in for pressure start getting the heal so every turn he doesn't have an attack we're way happier we can also train his mail looking for headringer and we do hit it that's really good for us it means this Charizard is guaranteed to not kill us next turn So we're very happy with this board state now. Our opponent has one blacksmith left if he plays a full four count, which is likely. Um, and two DCs left. But at this point we can start spamming our um, flare grunts, hammers, VS seekers. Concentrate all of our disruption onto his energy. Okay, so he just concedes, so 
He's going to go first in the next game. So we are 1-0 so far. And um, let's see if he's going to challenge us. Let me quickly star this deck and unstar that deck. So it will be at the front for us. Um, let's drop the challenge. Straight Toad. It's one of those things where I think we both challenge each other at the same time. <laughs> Just kind of awkward. I guess I'll cancel this challenge and go for it again. Straight Toad. Here we go. So he wants to go first. Understandable, because he can uh, try and set up as quickly as possible. Get Didn't see any Assault Vest that game. Maybe he just didn't get into them turn one, but I didn't see any even get discarded. So we did not want to go first. We'll shuffle up. We start Seismitoad, but not much else actually. Very awkward opening hand. So that's pretty ugly. Our opponent starts Shaman, which is also pretty bad for him. Especially if we can get, if he can't move it this turn and we can get Headringer on it, we're very happy with that. But, you know, we need a very good top deck for things like that to happen. Again, we see that turn one compressor exactly the same as last time. Second battle compressor comes in. This is one issue with playing so many disruption cards um, that, you know, they're not consistency cards all the time. Although we are playing, you know, for three Sycamore, two Misty, four Ultra Ball, two Shaman, four Trainers Mail. I think we have a lot of outs from our top deck. Let's see if we can get something good. I'd say we have like a 50-ish percent chance of a good top deck here. Like Ultra Ball's good, Shaman's good, DC itself is good, Misty or Sycamore, even Judge to an extent isn't awful. So, we'll see what happens, not too worried as of yet. We see a manual attachment of the Fire Energy to Shaman, and he's actually got the maxes off, which is going to really help him in this matchup for sure. Um, Gallade can threaten a lot for just double colorless energy, and it gives him premonition so that he's not always top decking into useless stuff but he can actually get into his blacksmiths and his DCs and such so very good that he got the maxes off turn one and he's gonna be able to move the shaman when he uh, when he wants to we do see an assault vest gonna be interesting to see where he wants to place this The assault vest is going on to the Entei. Okay. Let me see Premonition. He could still be having stuff like Acrobike that he wants to play, so there's good synergy with the Gallade in this deck for sure. There's the top decks getting reset. And what else is he going to do here? He chooses not to retreat. Which means we can just try and get rid of it. <laughs> so we'll just do that. Play this down. Play the Fury Belt and pass. Very slow from us. We didn't We didn't win the 50-50. We just got another Super Scoop up. <laughs> it's not exactly 50-50. I could do the number crunching now, but I can't really be bothered. <laughs> I listed quite a few things off the top of my head which could be out and there's also like ugh, kinda worrying his manual attachment fortunately is to a shaman just to retreat does he have blacksmith he does indeed have blacksmith so he's gonna kickstart with some uh, flame screens and the uh, 
the assault vest is also R for applying weakness and resistance. So at the moment, our quaking punch would be doing 80, reduced by 40, reduced by another 30 with flame screen. So we'd be punching for 10, which isn't the best, but we do have rough seas. So flame screen isn't doing much to us back at all. Um, so we see another shaman from our opponent. Gets into an acro bike now. Gets rid of a battle compressor. That seems fine. Although our hand is bad, we have a decent hand in terms of stalling, trying to wait until we have a good hand, because Super Scoop Up's a heals, Rough Seas is a heal for when he wants to flame screen, so not too concerned, but obviously a good top deck will help us out here. Ultra Ball's a good one, for sure, because that's a shaman. So getting rid of two valuable cards is frustrating, but we need shaman here. We'll first just play down Rough Season and use it. So fortunately, on the second time of asking, we got a good top deck. We hit DCE, which is happy days. And we have Zerosic for this for his tool, which is also very cool. Uh, could keep digging for um, energy denial cards. We've gone through one crushing so far. I think it's fine. Do hit a crushing, gets heads additionally, which is also very cool. And we'll start quaking punching for 50, I believe. Yeah, 50, with a reduction of the flame screen. So now we're a lot more comfortable back doing toad things, of course. We do see another blacksmith, so with an attachment he could even go for heat tackle this turn. Oh, we just see a retreat into Gallade for a DCE for Sensitive Blade. Oh, we see a premonition first anyway. So with our enhanced hammer gone, that's super frustrating for us. Also Zerosic is in the discard pile. There is Sensitive Blade for 130 damage. We hit Crushing Hammer, which is could be really good here. Do hit a Tails. We'll do the heal first, regardless. I um, think it's going to be a Sycamore here. We're going to try and heal this Seismitoad if possible. Do get the heads. So we're going to bench... Both of these, I think. Yeah, both seems fine. Again, looking for energy disruption cards. Do miss those. Cassius is going to be nice for next turn, though. To again get around the, um, the Gallade. So, just a Quaking Punch for 40. Not the best, but it's pressure, at the least. Um, we don't have much to deal with his energy, which is kind of awkward. We see a Scorched Earth, but we're likely going to be using Cassius anyway next turn. Scorched Earth is going to buy him two cards as well. You can see Gallade helps out a whole lot against Seismitoad. It's a cheap attacker. Oh wow, he's Lysandering. He's trying to race us here with Gallade. I think it makes sense. If he's seen us get Cassius, it makes a lot of sense to do that. Um, I think we have to go through the Gallade, even if it's going to be painful in terms of our own prizes. I think it's something that we just have to do. So Gallade's going to take a knockout, because again, I only saw one Lysander last turn, uh, last game, so... We draw into our fourth Seismitoad. I think because we have Cassius and Super Scoop Up, I think it's fine to commit energy uh, to the bench. Don't really want a Lysander. Like I say, I want to get through this... Um, Gallade first. So we'll use this Quaking Punch. Puts him to 80. So with the help of um, Absol next turn, we can actually deal with this um, Gallade.
which is good because this is a real threat. <laughs> See another premonition. Resource wise, he's doing way better than last game, which is kind of worrying. We've gone through a lot of crushing hammers. A few of our super scoop ups are starting to go. We still have all of our VS seekers though, which is pretty important. There's an Ente to his bench. There's a blacksmith as well. Is it going to the healthy one or the damaged one? It goes to the healthy Ente, okay. Makes my decision slightly easier for trying to kill this one as well, so that's good. So, you can use Absol here. Putting him in range of a knockout. We can use Cassius. Actually, I think we hold Cassius and try and go for Super Scoop up first. Although this could be our supporter for turns, so. Uh, Cassius is fine here. And we can Quaking Punch, finally dealing with this Gallade. Which is important because it's got a lot of HP, it's got the good ability, it's got a lot that can really frustrate us, so. Just don't want to deal with that really. In comes Ente, again he's a DCE away from a heat tackle, we do see DCE and here is the heat tackle. And it does get heads so no damage to himself, which is kind of good. Uh, we hit Headringer, which may as well get thrown on something. Um, we're going to try and go for Super Scoop Up, it is our third I believe. Do get a heads, we've been fairly lucky with all of our flips so far. I'm not going to complain about. And do I want to Lysander here or just get rid of energy? Um, four, five, six, seven. We know he plays at least um, eight fire from last game. This will be a second DCE. I think I'm just going to get rid of the energy. Although Lysandering up Shaman is kind of cool, but he just needs to pay one retreat cost, so. Let's just uh, deal with the DCE here and go for Quaking Punch for 80. We've denied a lot of prizes so far with Cassius and Super Scoop Ups. Again, we're battling through his resources. His second DCE is gone. He's gone through two uh, Blacksmith. Here is the uh, the heat tackle once again, and now we hit Misty. Misty is something I do want to play here for sure. Over Sycamore because we do have some decent cards in here. So I think I just want DCE for next turn. Um, we're at 90 HP, so he has to attach. DC and Blacksmith to be able to kill us. So with that logic it could be best to go for Rough Seas, but I think I just want to secure DCE here. For some following turns. Uh, if I'm Sycamoring next turn I can actually commit this energy. Unless he's going to try and stall us out. Hmm. Okay. We'll hold. And just deal with this Entei. He could be taking his next two prizes with a Blacksmith plus attachment next turn. But from then on, I don't see what other plays he has left. The Entei does come up. So supporter has to be Blacksmith if he wants to kill us this turn. Close game though. The Gallade has done a lot of work in terms of dealing with our... Forcing us to have uh, good resources. Oh, he wants to, uh, he wants to concede. <laughs> I thought he was fairly into this game. 
No, he may as well play it out for sure. He's not out of this game. I've gone for a lot of resources. I haven't gone through any VSE because that's the only thing that I haven't gone through. But other mm. other than that, I think he's still got a lot to lot to go through. I've still got four prizes left. It's nowhere near. Um, yeah, this is no way. See, I was talking about how threatening it was. I was saying, oh, wow, he could be at two prizes left this turn. So, And especially because he had cards he could have drawn this that turn that um, he didn't know he was out just yet. So Now we hit a rough seas. I can see why he'd want to scoop, though, <laughs> because being under toad lock is never that fun. So committing water energy gives me grenade hammer to finish out the game quicker, but I don't think we're at that stage quite yet. So I'm just going to commit DC here. The water energy can be used to retreat stuff. Um, and we're going to punch for 80. We do see a pass. Uh, we're going to heal. And now I think, with a couple of turns where he did nothing, I think now it might be out of his reach. But I think that turn, definitely. If he could have drawn cards with Scorched Earth and Shaman, and then got into blacksmith attachment he would have been in great shape so uh, even though it looks bad that he just did nothing the last few turns <laughs> um, and it makes me be like oh carry on and then just beat him it makes me look bad but I think he had outs to make it difficult for me for sure so because uh, at the time the NT only had 20 damage on it so he could have gone for a couple of heat tackles at least forced me to dig for VS Seeker to heal my dudes uh, here is a blacksmith so we could see a um, a heat tackle now, but just a flame screen. Uh, so we'll heal up a little bit. And go for Quaking Punch. Now the heat tackle is kind of a risk because if he flips tails, it means we're just one punch away with a Fury Belt. We do see a Giovanni scheme though, and a flame screen <laughs> for 50. Again, we can heal. And at 130 HP, it's still not safe to go for um, the attachment here because he could just heat tackle KO. But I want to set up. Um, I want to set up a grenade hammer next turn to win the game. Taking a super scoop up could be handy for sure. So we'll just do this. This means that if we top deck into a water energy, um, we have the win in two turns. Actually, yeah, we have two turns to draw a water energy or a card that can get us into a water. There's Zerosic. Don't think I'll be playing that. Um, if I VS Seeker for... No, it's too risky. I need to keep the VS Seeker for a guaranteed switching card. I was thinking of going for a Misty to dig for a water for next turn, but we'll do the slow and safe way. And how do we win the game this turn? Our support has to be Lysander, so there's no way that we can draw cards. So it's going to be a pass. I guess I could just Lysander Shaman for a quicker win. So we'll just start punching now. So now he can't heat tackle us. He can only blacksmith attach retreat. Again, Quaking Punch. So we have ground him down eventually. But that second game was definitely a lot closer. It didn't look close, but there was a turn where he could have gone to two prizes and have an Entei. So um, we can just punch for game now. So good games. Thank you very much. Sorry for making you play a few more turns, but I think genuinely the way I had it, I was foreseeing it in my head, it looked like it was close. Um, I guess your hand just didn't have uh, the right things in it to deal with it at that time. So... 
there we go guys there's the deck once again like i say i profiled this so if you want to talk, if you want to um, see me discuss this deck in detail you can we get through round one quite comfortably so uh stay tuned for round two and maybe toad can keep on rolling so thanks for watching guys it's been joe from omnipoke and i'll see you guys next time